<clears throat> All right, how's it going, Greg? Hey, I'm doing great. Um, enjoying summer. Hopefully, everybody else is. And uh, but hey, there's uh, there's life is changing once again in real estate. It appears with interest <laughs> rates and um, inventory a little bit. Um, yeah, in summer. I'm and are you there? Sorry, I was just messing with Facebook here as we get live. So, all right. So let's see. Today, Greg, we are talking about adaptability, right? And who's adaptability? Well, there's a lot of adapting that's, that happens in the market, right? I mean, when, you, when a market changes, everyone's adapting, but typically realtors are the ones that adapt first because we're on the ground. We're, um, we're the ones dealing with, agents are the ones dealing with, with uh daily transactions, daily showing requests, you name it. Um, if the, if the, what we've always seen, Paul, over the years is that the public relies upon the media to tell them what's going on. The media is almost always two to three months behind mm -hmm. uh, whatever is going on. So what's going to happen is you're going to be trying to explain something to a seller, how the market has changed, and the seller's not going to believe you because of the news they're still hearing and um, or they haven't mentally shifted with what with the shifts in our industry. So anyway, right. we just wanted to have that conversation with people today, right? Oh, yeah, and we're hearing more and more people who are, you know, hey guys, I just had a deadline come and go. What do I do? Um, or, you know, my clients are, are panicking because we're not getting any showing activity or my clients are panicking because we're not getting multiple offers. But then you hear about someone who ends up over the weekend getting another 27 offers on a listing. Right. And so what we've noticed over the years, Greg, you and I, is that in the bottom of the market um, or when the market was declining, agents were, or agents were always on the cutting edge over here and your, your sellers were lagging several months behind. Right. So in a down in a market that's moving downward, agents were always pricing about two months in advance because we knew the market was moving so slowly. So let's say the market value of this home was two hundred thousand dollars today. Well, the, we weren't selling homes in several days back then. We were selling homes in several months back then. So we needed to price this house. Literally, we had to underprice the home intentionally because in two months. When the buyer finally appears at the property, it either it, it, it's possible it could be overpriced in two months if we priced it today, right? Oh, yeah. So deal with that. Well, the other the other thing that you're going to see is that uh -huh. if you know there's a difference between the market flattening and there's a difference between the market dropping, but right. they both feel the same. Right. And so I've been in a market that's been skyrocketing for ten years straight, and all of a sudden it flattens. The sellers continue projecting up, the market flattens, and so as time progresses, the spread between reality, the gap gets bigger and bigger, which then makes sellers get frustrated because they're not getting showing activity, they're not getting offers, and then they start blaming their agents. Right. We and, and here's a real life example of it. We were talking with an agent. This would have been a couple of years ago now, but she was around. Um, from in the 2006, 8, 9, 10, 11 era, when prices were basically falling and they were at the very bottom. So, you know, you could go sell a home that's, you know, for $105,000 that today is worth close to 300, right? Yeah. And so um, she was having a hard time, uh, bless you. She was having a hard time wrapping her head around this. So she would go into a listing appointment. The market, by the way, market, this was probably like 2000, 18, 19, market's going like this, okay? But she's going, I can't believe these numbers. I can't believe their home is worth this much money. And she was underpricing, underpricing, underpricing. And what was happening was her clients were going, well, we didn't, we, we're not gonna hire you as our realtors. We, we went with this other realtor. And it, it, was, it was like several times in a row where she was at the listing table, was going for the listing and lost the listing. And, and then I said, well, why are you losing a listing? And she said, well, my clients tell me that I was, that they, they just didn't, they didn't like that I didn't believe in the price of their home. I, I didn't believe that it was worth as much money as they believed it was worth. 
So she said, but I thought, I told myself I would never overprice listings. I just, I owe it to my clients to never overprice a listing. So we talked, we talked with her and we ran through it and I said, okay, but are, do you, do you know if you're right or wrong on the price? She said, no, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So we, we talked about how to adapt the market because she was stuck. She was still thinking the market was depressed. She was still thinking the market was here. She couldn't wrap her head around the new market. And we had to have, do you remember this conversation, Greg, with this person? And we had to have a conversation where we said, you need to redefine what you know about the marketplace. And she did. And we talked to her about it. And we actually sent her out back to the, the client who had just told her they weren't, she was not going to get the gig. And I said, see if you can win them back. And so she went out there and she actually said, hey, I have a change of heart here. I think we should price at your price. I really would love to work with you. And her client said, you know what? We're going to give you a second chance. And guess what? <clears throat> here was the price she told them initially. Here was the price they wanted and it sold here. So they were both low. But it, it, was, a, it was an eye-opening thing for her to realize, holy cow, as the real estate professional, I was using all of my past beliefs to influence my decision-making today. And so anyways, we see more and more of this now where I was talking to a realtor last week. And... Um, they ended up getting a full price offer on the house, which I thought was great. Um, but it took them about, about almost 10 days to get that offer. And they only had one showing and one offer. And they were kind of blown away. And they said, you know, we priced it so well. How was it we only had one showing and one offer? I mean, it's, it's a giveaway price. And um, my argument back was, well, I think you probably priced it what it was worth, but I don't think it was a giveaway price, right? But that's another issue on the other end of things where realtors are overpricing homes, thinking that they're worth this much money. So anyways, I'm gonna let you jump in here, Greg, and add some wisdom here. Well, you know, I mean, all of that is, is right on. And, you know, it's, I, I'm thinking of a couple things right now. And we hear agents say to us periodically, I nailed that price and it's not selling. Yeah. Well, so for us listening to this, and we've heard this multiple times, we're going, well, I, I'm, I don't think you nailed it. Because we believe that the market is yeah. going to react, right? Right. So I don't know in, obviously, clearly in the market that we have been in for, I'm going to say, I know the, the industry talks about it only being the last couple of years, but I'm here to say it's clearly been moving 10% uh, or more since 2012. And so this has been going on for 10 years. Um, this is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. uh, we've never had an increase, I, I think, like this over a 10-year period. Um, although you could go back to 98 through 05, and you can see an increase before it tanked. Mm -hmm. uh, but the key here is still the agents, I believe, have to remain flexible in this market. You have to determine a new way to speak to the clients. There has to be new wording. Um, there has to be a new conversation. And I think the conversation has to be um, your number one goal right now is to figure out where your clients are, get it listed, get it signed. Mm -hmm. And then once you have it signed, I believe now before you leave the house is you have to have the gentle discussion. And you have to talk about some things like the what ifs. What if there are no showings? What if there are no offers? Mm -hmm. What if the offers are coming in under what you would hoped? And it, and so, you know, we are heading into a market where my big concern right now is that there's been so many agents that have joined the industry since 2012 they have never experienced a market where it takes more than a couple of weeks to sell a property, um, a market where you've got multiple offers. Um, and I'm, I'm concerned that we haven't spent enough time talking about a shifting market, adapting to it. And, you know, all of a sudden we've had the interest rate change. Um, I can tell you right now that as of this morning, the market in Mishrick, which is about 11 to 12 associations, on average is uh, the sales were down about 
the largest that we've had them in the last six months. I, they've been down every month. You said it was 16% year over year down? I think we're down 12.5% year over year to date. Um, I, but I think the month of um, June is showing up right now as being down about 14%. Okay. In sales. Mm -hmm. So we have far more agents and we've got less sales. So that, that means that everybody's going to have to be on their game. And the last thing you want to do right now is lose an opportunity with a listing because you were going to battle the seller um, up front and potentially, you know, when you think about it, when you battle them, the things you're battling are, well, if you don't believe in my price, why should I, why should I hire you? Mm -hmm. um, why won't you give me a chance to try the marketplace? Um, I, I mean, I've got three other people right here telling me they're willing to list it at a higher number. Mm -hmm. I'd like to use you, but, and so, um, you know, one of the, uh, the, uh, the veteran agents here in Five Star back in the, oh, 2008 to 10, when things were dumping, it was like, um, you've got to take the listings, guys, and you have to then have a strategy to work with that client over time. And this is the, this is the mind, shit, mind shift shift that we're going to have to employ in the coming days. And most of you, if you look at the number of agents that have joined the industry since 2012, it's massive. Um, well, absolutely. I mean, over the weekend here, talking to a realtor who said, this offer we have, only one offer on the house. And she said, man, it's, it's, I, 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 wish, it were, I wish it were non-contingent because it was a contingent offer. And it's, it's interesting that we, you know, it is the market we've been in, right? Where, you know, accepting a non-contingent offer is almost standard. Uh, waiving inspections is nearing standard. Um, appraisal gaps are nearing standard. But from basically 2006 through 2012, um, contingent offers were probably 98% of every single offer accepted. Well, and there's, and there's several types of contingent offers. Right. I mean, if they have their home sold, that was the normal contingency that we would it was wait. So old, meaning it's under contract. So the old, the old world would be, you go list a property. Once you have it pending, then you begin your home search during the pending period. And then you go find a home and you write an offer contingent upon the closing. Correct. That was about 98% of offers, right? And that's probably where we're heading back to. And right. there's going to be... Uh, inspections on every property, and there's yep. going to, um, and, but Look, people are going to stop. People are going to stop guaranteeing appraisals at some point. But your sellers are probably going to turn down some offers that they should have been willing to accept, but they won't know that until they've done it, and then it's too late, and you can't go back and recapture that offer. So um, there just has to be a different conversation. Um, we we know right now that there's probably many agents in the industry that have never done a price reduction. Mm -hmm. We know that there's many agents in the industry that have never had to find a way to keep an, uh, a client happy mm -hmm. when something is happening and there are no showings taking place. Yep. How do you, what's the conversation? How does that, what does that look like? Um, but we will be running some classes, I'm sure, coming up here. It'll be in the it'll be in the uh, the ten thousand. It will be in the live stream by Don. But there will be a, a shift in the conversation as we attempt uh, to prepare agents that have never experienced these things before. And again, you have if you have an agent near near you that you like, and they've been in the business prior to two thousand and eleven. It might be worth a conversation to spend, you know, have a cup of coffee, talk to them and learn about um, these different markets. And, and just so you know, for somebody like myself, who's been around for 44 years in this business, this is always happening. This is normal. This is mm -hmm. not abnormal to have a shift take yep. place. And the agents that are always successful are the ones that are open-minded they're willing to learn new tricks, so to speak. They're willing to question all the dogma that they've been telling themselves for the last 
10 years, um, they're willing to challenge others, and but they're also knowing that they have to have a change in the discussion. Because I'll tell you what, if you lose two or three listings coming up in the next couple of months, because you were inflexible, unwilling to work and adapt with that seller who was not there yet, and it was going to take more than a couple of weeks to convince them and spend that time and effort and energy, um, mm -hmm. you're, it's going to be painful. Yeah, it, It'll be a painful experience for you to stand there and you know put your fist down on a desk and say, but doggone it, I'm right. Well, you can be right and still not make any money. Yeah. And we want you to be, we want you to make money. Yeah. So interestingly here, Greg, um, March of 2022, Mishrik, which is again, 11 associations, we use them as a, as a, we use them as sort of a large sample, right? We, we're not talking specific and independent individual markets here, but we were, uh, we were 0.8 months supply in March. And as of right now, in the month of June, we were 1.2 months supply. So we saw a significant increase in inventory building in, in really months that we would have been normally decreasing. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, so we are, um, we're, we're, we're possibly seeing a change. I mean, we, we, we think the interest rates are probably playing an impact, right? That's gotta play an impact. I know people have, I wonder if we'll see more, more people doing renovations um, because a move is just becoming a little bit more costly. Yep. Um, you know, well, are, 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 are you going to have to at some times take an overpriced listing? Yeah. Well, you're going to have to make that decision. You know, I mean, you're going to have to decide where you're at. And some people are going to take this position. Well, I want to make sure that I'm just flat out honest. Yeah. Integrity. And, and I get that. Right? And, we, and we've, we've, met, we've navigated those same conversations, Greg, during the, during both the recession and the, the market bouncing back. But what did we used to do? We used to go into a listing and I think we, we, we used to go a listing with like three or four price reductions ready to go. We would pre-sign them, right? We would, yeah, because we had the conversation, we took the time to talk about, look at guys, I want to give you the opportunity to get top dollar. And I don't know exactly what this home is going to sell for. I can tell you that things are shifting underneath our feet right now. Um, I can tell you that um, we're going to do everything I can. I am here to help yeah. you. Get top so top. in today's market, I might say something like, hey, what, you know, you, while you're discussing price, you can feel free to tip your hat and, or tip, show your hand and tell them what you're thinking about pricing too. But I always want to know where my clients and I, again, I, I'm, I'm focused mostly on brokerage right now, but I would always want to know where my clients stand on pricing. Like, what are you guys thinking about pricing? Because they probably have a price in mind. They've been looking at Zillow. They've been looking at all the different like estimates out there on their home. And so if they finally tip their hand and say, hey, we were thinking 300 and you're thinking 275. Well, and they're, I'd sit here and I'd go, well, why don't we go with, I would say to them personally, I would say, look, if, we, if, if they are adamant, they want to try their number, great. But let's listen to the marketplace. Let's react to the marketplace. Let's move quickly. Let's not hang out at 300, long, 300 for, for too long. Let's give it a shot. Let's give it a week or so, and then quickly adapt so that we can get that. We don't want to become a stale listing out there. And, and I think that most people are going to be okay with that. And then that's, that's, that allows you to have your integrity where you basically said, here's where I think the number is, but I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm like a meteorologist. I can get close, but I'm not always right. Right. Now here's what happens. This is a, a classic thing. When a realtor takes an, a, a home that they think is overpriced, they're going to use words and say things that are going to irritate the seller and potentially cause you to lose that listing. And so you're going to have to watch the words because uh, if the seller senses that you're not going to put 100% effort into their listing because you believe it's overpriced and you don't want to waste dollars um, or energy, uh, if they get any sniff that that you're going to hold back until you think you've got it priced where you want it to be. So you almost have to go overboard to prove to them that, look at I'm going to do the maximum campaign here. 
even if I'm telling you I'm concerned about the price. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, um, and again, I want to go back to that thing about what are you going to do? And you need to have this discussion. Is it like, I've always believed that we really need about two weeks to figure out what the market is doing. If we get some activity, then we know maybe we're price. But man, if you get skunked and um, over the first two weeks, when it's brand new, it's hot and you get skunked, who are the best buyers? The best buyers are the ones that show up first typically, right? And they're the motivated people. It's not the people that show up six months after the home's been listed, man. Those are the sharks. Those are the people. Those are the flippers. Those are the people looking for the buy. Right. And, um, so I don't want to see you miss your opportunity with the best buyers that are motivated and end up only offering your home to the sharks, so to speak. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's really so, not a correlation between necessarily between length of time on the market and more money. Yeah. I think it has an inverse uh, reaction. Uh, um, clearly, clearly. And so again, this is a new conversation. We might be ahead of, of where it is currently because yeah, we're, we're still aware that there are still things selling quickly. We're, and we're still we're still absolutely in a seller's market, right? right. Um, but it's not 0.8 months supply anymore. And may, maybe we're heading towards two months supply or 2.5 months supply. And so anyone who's listening, who maybe this is their first time really learning about supply, if we, we, if we are sub a 5.5 month supply kind of range moving into the five, four, that is definitely seller market territory, meaning sellers have the advantage. And then above maybe like a six and a half to seven month supply is buyers have the advantage. I've always, I mean, I've always felt that five to six months supply was an even na a normal natural environment where neither party has a huge advantage over the other. Um, but once you get up seven, eight, nine months, um, now you're talking about a buyer's market again. And we've got a long ways to go. I mean, we're still sitting at like one, did you say? One we're point. at one point two month yeah. supply. I'm in Michigan, so that's going to take up eleven associations, a big chunk of Michigan. But on average, that's where we're at. Yep, yep. So I hope that again, this is not about fear. This is about prepping for the future, being ahead of the game, understanding where we're going and where we're likely to go. Um, I don't think we're going to go back to a two week supply, which is where we've been for a long time. And um, we've been at two week supply for probably two years. And um, I'm looking at my graph right now. In 2012, we were at 4.1, uh, 13 and 14 were in the threes, 15 was in the twos, and then we've been below two since 16. So, I mean, it's, it's just been a massive seller's market now for um, at least uh, 10 years. Yep, absolutely. So basically the, the gist of this thing, the moral of this is just be prepared mentally to be able to, to, that the market will shift, it will change. You will have to think about price reductions. You will have to have these conversations with your sellers and your buyers. And um, hopefully we'll be there with you the whole entire way, having these conversations right here and interviewing you know, um, others along the way as these things unfold. So that's our goal is gonna be to stay on top of whatever the market does. Because at the end of the day, we don't control the market. We only interpret the market. We only react to the market. We don't make the market. Um, so we have to be able to adapt to any market and, um, and help our clients navigate whatever market we're going through. Exactly, all righty. Um, all right, everybody. Hope you have a great week. Enjoy the, enjoy the weather. Hey, we'll catch you later. Yep, see ya.